Hey, everybody. Hi. All right, the bare bone crew. I like it, huh? Bones for bones. <laughs> That's right. Michael Galkin, Dallas Warrior News. Where do you assess your kickoff return game is? And maybe if you want to branch out the power return too, but just kickoff return as a starter point. Yeah. I think, you know, we, um, we're not experimenting with anything. We're just figuring out the, the right matchups and kind of the right return to get a spark going. And our first one we had this past game I thought was really good. You know, we changed up just a little a couple things. And then the second one, they changed something up. And, you know, if you look at the tape, you know, they ran a twist. And there's just some sorting out we had to do. But we also had a lot of moving pieces yesterday with when Leighton gets hurt, you know, then we lose the moan. And then you lose the moment. We didn't have another linebacker that really filled in for that. So it started a big shuffle. Um, either with our defensive back rotation, you know, when um, Bland was out for a little bit, and then they switched out Kelvin for Shawnee. And so there's a lot of behind the scenes moving pieces yesterday that was a good challenge to piece together. First of all, getting 11 on the field, and then making sure each guy knew what they were supposed to do on the punt return, even at the end of the game. You know, we got James Washington back in there and moved Is Mukwamu to a different spot. Um, they moved somebody else into Damone's spot. So it was, it was, you know, you practice Monday through Saturday. You know, this is the plan. This is the plan. This is what you got. And then Sunday hits, and it's like, oh, okay, hell with that. You know, because now you got to go here. You got to go here. You got to go here. I know you haven't done it yet, but it was kind of one of those games yesterday. And I thought the guys actually did a pretty good job. You know, we had a punt return that was solid and a real good kick return where. We didn't block the backside safety, or else it could have been bigger. And then one other time, they kind of got us on a twist. But um, every Sunday presents a new challenge. You know, so I think Mike Tyson had the quote, you know, everybody's got a plan until you, you get hit in the face, and then the plan changes. And a lot of times, you get hit in the face before the game even starts. You know, so. Uh, Calvin Watkins, Dallas News. It looks as if you might have to go through that again, because they got some juggling to do at corner and even at linebacker. So how do you? plan for this week knowing I'm going to have to juggle some stuff. Yeah, I think the last, gosh, it seems like at least two months, our practices have revolved around a lot of guys playing a, little, a lot of different spots throughout the week. So it's like, hey, you might be here, you might be here. Kind of have a, a, a big picture mindset. And when we get closer to Sunday, you know, have a better idea exactly where you're going to be. But at least it keeps everybody playing. You know, it keeps Sheffield and Nashon and Mackenzie Alexander and CJ and Kelvin playing and competing, and then when it comes down to it, okay, let's tighten it up. So that's just kind of part of the game is, you know, there's a lot. Even by tonight, we like to try to figure out who the 48 is, but that's not ever realistic. So as the week goes on, it's just, you know, continuing to figure it out. It never, it never ends. Yeah. The game plan, it never ends. Babe, uh, Babe for Cowboys Radio. Um, I have a question for you, but did you almost pull a hammy on the uh, Turpin return? I saw you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just in my head. I'm acting like I'm a player, so I'm like, "Come on, you know," I'm trying to like body language with him as he goes. But no, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> um, would you walk through, if you would, uh, when you when you lose a guy, and, and yesterday seemed to be uh, an inordinate amount of guys yeah. moving around, or you know, Kelvin playing, getting out, yeah. shuffling, the mechanics of how you have to get the information, or they, somebody has to get the information to you, here's what's happening. Yeah. And I know you're obviously watching, but you also have your own thing. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So, for example, when Leighton gets hurt, you know, I can, I can recognize that right away. Don't know if it's going to be for, you know, two plays or for a quarter or for a game. And so, in the meantime, I really keep Damone, hey, I need you to stay on this just for at least another couple minutes. And then if we find out more information that Leighton's out, then I need you to stay on punt, Damone, because I don't have a backup for you. But I can get you off punt return, kickoff, and kick return. But that's not just one player that does that. So on punt return, you know, I go to Sean McKeon, who is basically a super sub for us. And I say, hey, Sean, you need to fill in for Damone at this spot. Here's the cards. I have our plays on a card so I can show you, hey, if I call this, this is what you got. But if I call this, this is what you got. And going into third down on punt return alert, we always have a two-way call. You know, if it's fourth and short, you kind of have this call. If it's fourth and long, you kind of have this call. So I alert him on both calls and what assignment he would have. And then when we got to kickoff, I had to take Damone off kickoff, but there wasn't one guy that could just take his spot. So I had to move Nation to Damone's spot, 
I had to move M Mukuamu into Nashon's spot, his old spot. Um, and then we lost another one. And then when Durant Bland went out, I had to put Noah in the Durant spot. So um, that was an interesting one. And then kick return, to be honest with you, I was a little bit fearful that if we had a kick return coming up, I wasn't, I wasn't going to have an 11th guy. <laughs> I mean, I would have, sure. but I, I, I didn't know who it was going to be at that point because we had already moved one guy to a different spot. And then to have somebody go in at Damone's spot, we basically had everybody used up. So I can't remember exactly what was going to happen because it was about a three-person rotation to fill basically one spot. Because it's not like you know there's somebody that can just go in for Damone because we're already using everybody else. Um, it's happened a few times on field goal pro, which is a real sneaky one where a lineman goes down on second or third down, and you know I got to school Jason Peters up at left guard or right wing, so. There's, yes, you know, it's, so that's kind of how yesterday went. A lot, a lot of moving parts. And then trying to get those guys to understand, like, on kickoff, you're this position, this is what you need to do, even though you haven't done it. And on kick return, here's the three-man rotation, and this is what you got, this is what you got, this is what you got. And sometimes I pray for TV timeouts, but two times yesterday we didn't have a TV timeout, so the refs were blowing the whistle in my huddle, and I'm trying to talk to the guys about, you know, where you're at and where we're going, and if they kick it left, if they kick it right. And sometimes I got asked, don't pull the whistle. I can go faster if you just don't pull the whistle in the huddle. So um, a lot of behind the scenes yeah. stuff that, that um, makes it a fun challenge, but sometimes doesn't offer, you know, lend to great consistency. So we're working through it. We're going to be all right. Great. Boston Scott had a long return for them yep. yesterday. What are you seeing in the Eagles uh, returning, especially in kickoff return? Yeah, kickoff return, they've hit a few big ones lately. And Boston Scott's been a guy for them the last couple of years, really on all, all phases. Um, you know, he's just that little kind of quick um, Darren Sproles type, you know, where he's a little bit smaller body, but real quick and great vision. And he's gotten loose on a couple good kick returns, which is which is great for them. Um, and I know that their their punt returner is a rookie, and he's done a good job lately. Um, I'm aware they dressed, you know, five linebackers the last couple of games just for special teams, 54, 48, 17. You know, they got a new guy that they dressed, number 57. Um, so they got some. They got some good players. Fifty-eight Johnson, the rookie from Kansas. So they got a good lineup. That's why they're a good team. How is uh, James Washington coming along on special teams? Something that he hasn't done a whole lot. Yeah, yeah slowly but surely. It's uh, it's a foreign language to him. But let's, let's just face it. He knows it. You know. So it's uh, it's a it's a huge learning curve for him. Even though hey, it's as simple as hey, if you're on kick return, you know, chip it two, go get the one. But then when the ball gets kicked and everything happens so fast. Now there's an element of like game speed. So it's one thing to know what to do, but then you got to know how fast you have to do it. So like on Kelvin's kick return, I thought we had a chance to go the distance, but James couldn't get to the safety who came across his face fast enough, who made the tackle when we cut it back. So just little things like that. It's just, you know, I can know what to do, but now I got to pull those triggers so fast because everything happens so fast. And that's part of the learning curve is the speed of the special teams part of it. For sure. CD doesn't play much special teams, nor does Gallup. And if TY is active, what sort of stress does it put on special teams if you have a few wide receivers who don't really do that and, and having to compensate for that on the other areas of your team? Yeah, a lot. Yep. And, you know, like Philadelphia, for example, you know, Zach Pascal's outstanding special teams guy for him. And so when you get that fifth receiver that can go cover a kickoff as a five or you know, play wing on punt like he does. It's a, it's a huge roster, you know, advantage. And so um, we're still looking, you know, at different guys that can fill some of those spots, you know. But to James' credit, he's never done it, so he's trying. But I'm cautious of putting him in some positions where he's just not accustomed, accustomed to it. Um, like a Zach Pascal, who's got a ton of experience as a special teams receiver. So um, that'll add stress to it, but we always figure it out. Uh, Sam Williams, his physicality shows up. Yeah. Do you love it all, or is there a part of it where you have to kind of harness it and say, be careful out there so you don't draw anything? Yeah, I love it all. I don't want to harness it, and I don't want him to ever tell him to be careful. You know, with the penalty you're probably alluding to yesterday, he did exactly what I had coached him to do, to be honest with you. When he was, you know, he got his hands on the punter, which you can't go hit the punter, but he got his hands on the punter because if the punter wants to play football, we got to block the punter. So he did it with his hands. You know, he obviously pushed him late, 
But, you know, when I talked to him on the sideline, you know, he's so into it. And I think that's what people maybe don't understand, which rightfully so, is he's playing hard and he doesn't hear the whistle and he still feels like the returner's still alive, but it's behind him. So he doesn't know if the returner's out of bounds or if he's still going. And the punter's still adding as a tackler and he doesn't hear the whistle. So um, it's not an excuse. It's just the way football is sometimes. I got him on the side. I said, calm down. You know, just it felt like they threw it because it was a little bit late. You know, I didn't hear the whistle. I thought the return was still alive. I know, I, you know you're okay. Just, just keep going, man. I love your play style. Just, just be smart when you think the play's over to, you know, not shove a punter to the ground because they're going to treat a punter like a, a quarterback. But no, harnessing Sam, no way. Telling him to be careful, no way. There's a, you know, there's an education element for sure that I got to continue to coach him on. But man, he is, he's, he's all in, and for a rookie, he's been a great contributor. Cool. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, Thank you. awesome. Thanks, you guys.